happy midweek po sa lahat at uh, magandang gabi ang ating topic ngayong gabi ay tungkol sa chapter 22 ng ministry of healing tungkol po sa dress nagpapasalamat po kay, kay sister Crisel sa pag invite uh, tungkol po dito sa magandang topic na ito tayo po manalangin Our Father in heaven, forgive us from our sins, be merciful to us. Please uh, give us wisdom and understanding to understand the spirit of prophecy so that our, cha- our lives may be aligned with your will. Thank you for hearing our prayers, give us wisdom and understanding to do your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, chapter 22. The Bible teaches modesty in dress, in like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. Ito po ay nasa 1 Timothy 2.9. Uh, this forbids display in dress. Ako, huwag daw po masyadong uh, <laughs> ma-display. Gaudy colors, profuse ornamentation. Any this device designed to attract attention to the wearer or to excite admiration is excluded from the modest apparel which God's word enjoins. Paano na pala yan? Our dress is to be inexpensive, not with uh, gold or pearls or costly array. Yan po. And money is a trust from God. It is not ours to expend for the gratification of pride or ambition. In the hands of God's children, it is food for the hungry and clothing for the naked. Sorry. It is a defense to the oppressed, a means of health to the sick, a means of preaching the gospel to the poor. You could bring happiness to many hearts by using wisely the means that is now spent for show. Consider the life of Christ. Kung ano? Study His character and be partakers with Him in His self-denial. Ah... In the professed Christian world, enough is expended for jewels and needlessly expensive dress to feed all the hungry and to clothe the naked. Fashion and display absorb the means that might comfort the poor and the suffering. They rob the world of the gospel of the Savior's love. Missions languish. Oh nga, mas marami pa sanang tayong madala sa langit siguro. Multitudes perish for the want of Christian teaching. Oh, Beside our doors and in foreign lands, the heathen are untaught and unsaved, while God has laden the earth with his bounties and filled its storehouses with the comforts of life. While he has so freely given to us a saving knowledge of his truth, what excuse can we offer for permitting the cries of the widow and the fatherless, the sick and the suffering, the untaught and the unsaved, to ascend to heaven? In the day of God, when bo- brought face to face with Him who gave His life for these needy ones, what excuse will those offer who are spending their time and money upon indulgences that God has forbidden? Forbidden pala talaga. So, such will not Christ say, I was unhungered. Oh nga, ito na sa Bible po ito. And you gave me no meat. I was thirsty. And you gave me no drink, naked, and ye clothed me, not sick, and in prison, and ye, ye visited me not, Matthew 24, uh, 25, 42, and 43. But our clothing, while modest and simple, should be of good quality, of becoming colors, and suited for service. It should be chosen for durability rather than display it should provide warmth and proper protection the wise siguro yan ay sa malalamig na lugar sabi kasi ni Jose Rizal bakit daw nag <laughs> Amerikana dito yung init init <laughs> anyway dyan sa inyong church ay aircon kaya yan ay ibang ano lugar it should uh, be chosen for durability rather than display. It should provide warmth and proper protection. The wise woman described in the Proverbs is not afraid of the show of snow for her household. For all her household are clothed with double garments. 
Proverbs 31, 21. Her dress should be cleanly. Uncleanness in dress is unhealthful and thus defiling to the body and to the soul. Ye are the temple of God. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. That's in 1 Corinthians 3, 16 and 17. In all respects, the dress should be healthful. Above all things, God desires us to be in health. Health of body and of soul. And we are to be workers together with Him for the health of body and soul. Soul and body. Both are prompted by healthful dress. It should have no, the grace, the beauty, the appropriateness of natural simplicity. Christ has warned us against the pride of life, but not against its grace and natural beauty. Okay. May prinsipyo daw po sa fashion. Hindi masyadong una, hindi masyadong huli. Hindi ko lang alam kung saan sa ito sa EGY writings na ko na mabasa yun noon. Okay, balik tayo dito. He pointed to the flowers of the field, to the lily unfolding in its purity, and said, Even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Matthew 6, Matthew 6, 29. Thus, by the things of nature, Christ illustrates the beauty that heaven values, the most modest grace, the simplicity, the purity, and the appropriateness that would make our attire pleasing to him. The most beautiful dress he bids us wear upon the soul. No outward adorning can compare in the value or loveliness with that of a meek and quiet spirit, which in his sight is of great price. 1 Peter 3, 4 Those who make the Savior's principles their guide, how precious his words of promise. Why are ye anxious concerning raiment? If God doth so clothe the grass of the field which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more, much more clothe you? Be not therefore anxious, saying, Whether with or withal shall we be clothed? For your heavenly Father knows that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Matthew 6, 28-33 Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusted in thee. Isaiah 26, 3 What a contrast is this to the weariness, the unrest, the disease, and wretchedness that result from the rule of fashion? How contrary to the principles given in the scriptures are many of the modes of dress that fashion prescribes. Think of the styles that have prevailed for the last few hundred of years or even for the last few decades. How many of them, when not in fashion, would be declared immodest? How many would be pronounced inappropriate for a refined, God-fearing, self-respecting woman? The making of changes in apparel for the sake of fashion is merely not sanctioned by the Word of God. Changing styles and elaborate costly ornamentation squander the time and means of the rich and lay waste the energies of mind and soul. They impose a heavenly burden on the middle and poorer uh, not the heavenly, heavy burden on the middle and poorer classes. Many who can hardly earn a li livelihood, livelihood who with simple modes might make their own clothing are compelled to resort to the dressmaker in order to be in fashion. Many a poor girl, for the sake of a stylish gown, has deprived herself of the warm underwear and paid the penalty with her life. <coughs> Many another, coveting the display and elegance of the rich, has been enticed into paths of dishonesty and shame. Many a home is deprived of comforts. Many a man is driven to embezzlement or bankruptcy to satisfy the extravagant demands of the wife or children. Many a woman forced to prepare for herself or her children the stylish costumes demanded by fashion is doomed to ceaseless drudgery. Many a mother with throbbing nerves and trembling fingers toil far into the night to add to her children's clothing ornamentation that contributes nothing to healthfulness, comfort, or real beauty. For the sake of fashion, she, she sacrifices her health 
and that calmness of spirit so essential to the right guidance of her children. So, hindi na naalagaan yung mga bata dahil ang inaatupag ay <laughs> fashion. The culture of mind and heart is neglected and the soul is dwarfed. The mother has no time to study the principles of physical development that she may know how to care for the health of her children. She has no time for ministering to their mental or spiritual needs. No time to sympathize with them with little or with uh, in their little disappointments and trials and to share in the interests in their interests and pursuits. Almost as soon as they come into the world, the children are subjected to fashion's influence. They hear more of dress than of their savior. Nako. They see their mothers consulting the fashion plates more earnestly than the Bible. Nako. The display of dress is treated as of greater importance than the development of character. Parents and children are robbed of that which is best and sweetest and truest in life. For fashion's sake, they are cheated out of the preparation for the life to come. It was the adversary of all good who instigated the invention of the ever-changing fashions. He desired nothing so much as to bring grief and dishonor to God by working the misery and ruin of human beings. One of the means by which he most effectively accomplishes this is the devices of fashion that weaken the body as well as enfeeble the mind and belittle the soul. Women are subjected to serious maladies and their sufferings are greatly increased by the manner of dress. Instead of preserving their health over the trying emergencies that are sure to come, they, by their wrong habits, too often sacrifice not only health but life and leave to constitution and leave to their children a legacy of woe in a ruined constitution perverted habits and false ideas of life one of the wasteful uh, fashion's wasteful and mischievous devices is the skirt that sweeps the ground oh yung mahabang mahabang damit <laughs> na nalilinisan yung ano yung daan yung street uncleanly uncomfortable inconvenient all this and more is true of that trailing skirt. It is extravagant both because of the superfluous material required <coughs> and because of the needless wear on account of its length. And whoever has seen a woman in a trailing skirt with hands filled with parcels attempt to go up or down stairs or enter a streetcar to walk through a crowd to walk in the rain or on a muddy road needs no other proof of its inconvenience and discomfort. Another serious evil is the wearing of skirts that there hindi to mga sadong problema. That their way must be sustained by the hips. Yung mabibigat na damit, parang hindi naman yata ito problema dito sa Pilipinas. <coughs> this heavy weight pressing upon the internal organs drags them downward and causes weakness in the stomach and a feeling of lassitude, inclining the wearer to stoop which further comes the lungs making correct breathing more difficult. Masyadong masikip. Of late years, the dangers resulting from the compression of the waist have been so fully discussed that few can be ignorant in the regard to them. Yet, so great is the power of fashion that the evil continues. By this practice, women and young girls are doing themselves untold harm. It is essential to help that the chest have room to expand and eat. Uh, to expand its full extent in order that the lungs may be enabled to take full inspiration. When the lungs are restricted, the quality of oxygen received into the dim them is lessened, the blood is not properly vitalized, and the waste poisonous matter which should be thrown off through the lungs is retained. In addition to this, the circulation <coughs> are so cramped and crowded out, of the crowded out of the place that they cannot perform their work properly. Tight lacing does not improve the form. One of the chief elements of physical beauty is symmetry. The harmonious proportion of parts and the correct model of physical development is to be found. Not in the figures displayed by French modistes, but in the form as developed according to the laws of God in nature. God is the author of all beauty and all only as we conform to his leading shall we approach the standard of the true beauty. Another evil with custom fosters is the unequal distribution of the clothing. <coughs> so that while some parts of the body have more than is required, others are insufficiently clad. 
The feet limbs being removed from the vital organs should be especially guarded from cold by abundant clothing. It is impossible to have health when the extremities are habitually cold, for if there is too little blood in them, there will be too much in other portions of the body. Uh, perfect health requires a perfect circulation, but this cannot be had <coughs> while three or four times as much clothing is worn upon the body where the vital organs are situated as upon the feet and limbs. Uh -huh. A multitude of women are nervous and careworn because they deprive themselves of the pure air that would make pure blood and of the freedom of motion and that would that would send the blood bounding through their veins, giving life, health, and energy. Many women have become confirmed in valleys when they might have enjoyed health, and many have died of consumption <coughs> and other diseases when they might have lived their allotted term of life had they dressed in accordance with health principles and exercised freely in the open air. In order to secure the most helpful clothing, clothing the needs of every part of the body must be carefully studied. The character, the climate, the surroundings, the condition of health, <coughs> the age and the occupation must all be considered. <coughs> every article of dress should fit easily, obstructing their neither circulation with blood nor a free full natural respiration. So, dapat hindi masyado masikip. Everything worn should be so loose that when the arms are raised, the clothing will be correspondingly lifted. Ah, okay. This is easy to test. Women who are in failing health can do much for themselves by sensibly dressing and exercise. When suitably dressed for outdoor enjoyment, let them exercise in open air carefully at first, but increasing the amount as they continue to uh, injure it. By taking this course, many might regain health and live to take their share in the world's work. <coughs> How about independent of fashion? Let women themselves, instead of struggling to meet the demands of fashion, have the courage to dress healthfully and simply. Instead of sinking into a mere household drudge, let the wife m and mother take time to read, to keep herself well informed, to be a companion to her husband to keep in touch with the developing minds of her children. Let her use wisely the opportunities now hers to influence her dear ones for the higher life. <coughs> Let her take time to make the dear Savior a daily companion and familiar friend. Let her take time for the study of His Word, take time to go with the children into the fields and learn of God through the beauty of His works. Let her keep cheerful and buoyant instead of spending every moment in endless sewing make the evening a pleasant social season a family reunion after the day's duties many a man would thus be led to the to choose the society of his home before that of the clubhouse of the saloon many a boy would be kept from the street or corner grocery many a girl would be saved from frivolous and misleading associations the influence of the home would be to parents and children what god designed it sh should be a lifelong blessing. Ayan po, napakaganda ng chapter 22 of uh, Ministry of Healing. Tayo po yung manalangin. Our Father in Heaven, we praise the Lord for the spirit of prophecy, for the Bible, for teaching us uh, what God ought us to do. Help us to be humble, help us to be submissive to your will, help us to understand that we are just creatures you are the creator you are no all knowing you know what is best for us help us to be give us uh, wisdom and understanding to be obedient to you so that we can uh, practice our character for eternity thank you for hearing and answering our prayers and for the for guiding us in Jesus name we pray Amen. thank you for